Tonight on the MTN News, shots fired after a home invasion. A Luther couple shoots and kills an intruder in their home. At Brazen Burglar, a black bear weighing several hundred pounds. Plus the long road to recovery. They were extraordinarily happy. The smiles were very big. More than a year after this historic flooding, the road to East Rosebud is finally back open. But first, concerns at the country club. Nobody's alleging that somebody maliciously did this, um, but we do believe it was unreasonable to leave that deck in the condition it was in. A look at the lawsuits now filed as victims of the Briarwood deck collapse point to a paper trail of problems. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Two weeks after a deck collapse at the Briarwood Country Club sent 50 people to the hospital, a lawsuit is filed alleging negligence and pointing fingers at a rotten deck in need of repair. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. MTN's Jackie Coffin has closely been following this story since the collapse happened and she joins us now. And Jackie, you tracked down public documents showing problems with that deck dating back more than a year. What did you find out? Well, Russ, Andrea, I actually have a copy of this permit right here that Briarwood Country Club filed with the city back in June of 2021. At at that time, Briarwood was planning a remodel and replacement of the deck that collapsed. Despite several issues outlined here in these documents, it appears most of those repairs never happened. Victims say the collapse happened quickly. It just happened. We just saw everyone on the ground. But documents show problems with this deck at Briarwood Country Club had been years in the making. Decks shouldn't collapse and there's likely uh, many balls that were dropped. A new lawsuit filed Friday in Yellowstone County District Court alleges failed maintenance, claiming, quote, the collapse occurred due to refusal to reasonably replace failed maintenance, design flaws, and or construction flaws, and goes on to allege the deck beams and support structure comprised of rotting and decaying lumber. Nobody's alleging that somebody maliciously did this. Um, but we do believe it was unreasonable to leave that deck in the condition it was in. MTN obtained these documents from the City of Billings Building Division that offer even more insight on the condition of the deck. In June 2021, Briarwood filed a permit to replace it. Engineers inspected the deck and provided this review to Briarwood. The R's here indicate six beams that were deteriorating and needed to be replaced. The asterisks show another six deteriorating deteriorating beams that needed more inspection. Engineers marked only two of the existing beams as acceptable. The load limit was examined too, and several of the deteriorating beams were at or near the capacity to hold weight. We asked to speak with city engineers for this story while the city declined to talk on camera. The project manager who reviewed this permit tells MTN the city sent notes to Briarwood asking if and how the deteriorating beams were going to be replaced, but says he never received a response. It's unclear what repairs, if any, were ever made. Though this is what Briarwood PGA manager Scott Pekovich told MTN the day after the collapse. The undercarriage of the deck has not been replaced recently. What has been replaced was the top Trex decking. The lawsuit filed on behalf of eight victims alleges Briarwood, the Black Bunker Bar and Grill, and up to 40 yet unnamed board members and others connected to the club were all negligent. It also claims Briarwood painted the rotting structure to, quote, obscure, conceal, and hide hide the rotting condition of the deck. I think that most people would believe if you walk on a deck with new planking that the proper workup has been done to make sure the support was, was there to hold you. And that unfortunately and tragically wasn't the case. Briarwood has not yet filed a response to the lawsuit. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. We do want to be transparent, let you know that a member of our news staff serves on the board of the Briarwood Country Club. That employee did not have any involvement in reporting on this lawsuit. It's been a long road to recovery. More than a year in the making, a temporary road and bridge into East Rosebud Lake is now open. That road had been closed for more than a year after it was washed away by those historic floods in June of 2022, leaving no other way than to hoof it to get to cabins, trails, and campsites. David Jay was there as the road reopened and has more. Some people have not been up to their cabins since the flooding of last year. They've been able to walk from the Jimmy Joe campgrounds, but now with that temporary bridge fix, it's the first time they've been able to drive to their homes in about a year. 
It was a sight for sore eyes and a day many thought they'd never see after damage like this. I am so incredibly happy to drive up here. After the historic June floods of 2022 wiped away the popular path to East Rosebud Lake, cabin owners for the first time were able to drive to their homes on this newly rebuilt road. I mean, I'm looking forward to people getting up here and like I say it's been a year that we've seen seen some of these folks. The last day many saw each other was on this day last summer when their vehicles were airlifted from the lake. We just started gathering people up and they grabbed to the go bags and and uh, just started doing it. So you know it's something that uh, everybody that was involved will never forget. During the almost 14 month long closure this was the only way into the lake. A three mile treacherous hike from the Jimmy Joe campground. A difficult journey which would take two to five hours. It was a slog. It's hot and muddy and it took about five hours um, and you had to carry all your food. A bridge over the East Rosebud River was also washed out. A bridge also important to people who live nearby and they're happy for their neighbors who can now get to their cabins. We have a lot of friends who have cabins up at the East Rosebud Lake and it's really been sad to see that they have had so much difficulty in getting up to their place. These people have been coming here for years and years and years. You know, they're all extended families of the original families. The East Rosebud Homeowners Association caretaker and his wife are the only people who live full time up here and for everyone else it's a summer or second home. They're anxious to see the damage and what's going on up here and, and kind of resume their you know their lives up here so it's uh, a lot of them are excited to get up here so I expect it to be a busy fall. A day many have been dreaming and a reason to celebrate and a return to family traditions. Near East Rosebud Lake, David J. MTN News. Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh has been talking about the possibility of some of us seeing some heavy rain this weekend. Let's check in with him now for a first look at the forecast and what we can expect. Ed? Here's a look at Doppler radar up to the minute right now. Here's Billings and watch everything that's moving around us right now. There's a reason for it. We'll talk about it in a little bit in Maine weather, but showers, thunderstorms have been much heavier to the west and to the east of Billings, so we still have the potential for some flooding conditions here through southeastern Montana and northern Wyoming tonight heading into tomorrow, and then that gets to be a little bit smaller areas. We start looking in towards Saturday. This afternoon, we've seen some heavier rain, so we right now have a flood advisory into effect between Harleton over towards Rygate. And we could see more of these storms develop over the next several days as well. We'll break down all the forecast details for you in just a few minutes and help you plan your weekend and beyond with the seven day forecast. More wildfires popping up this week in Montana, particularly on the western side of the state. Take a look at the current fire map from the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation. 113 fires broke out this week with 16 of those in the last 24 hours. Two of the largest fires in the state right now are both 0% contained. The Narada fire is burning 13,700 acres and the Middle Ridge fire, that one's west of the Flathead Reservation, that's burning about 13,000 acres. This afternoon, the map showed 52 active fires burning in our state. Carbon County couple is cleaning up from a brazen break in the intruder a black bear, which they ultimately shot and killed inside the sunroom of their home. Celia Oblander and her fiance, Tom Bolcom, live in Luther. They woke up around 3 a.m. Thursday when their dog started barking. They walked downstairs, found a black bear in their living room. The couple says the bear refused to leave, so Tom grabbed a gun and shot the animal and then chased it from room to room until the animal finally collapsed. Turns out the bear had climbed into the home through a window Fish, Wildlife and Parks tells MTN the couple was justified in killing the bear and say they'd received reports of a bear getting into garbage and eating dog food at several other homes nearby. Businesses nowadays have to get creative to accommodate for the changing economy and keep up with trends. But as I found out, a beloved Billings Brewery is thinking not just outside the box, but outside their patio, cultivating a hop yard directly on Montana Avenue, hoping to reap the benefits for beer lovers. If you know Billings. We just uh, finished our 16th year in business. You know Carter's Brewery. We have a pretty loyal following, so our, our, our tasting room's been really busy. And Owner Mike Urich is busy on this day, keeping that loyal following thirsty. Today I'm actually brewing like a Bach for late fall. Got our Oktoberfest ready yesterday for fall. But in between all of that, he's been practicing his green thumb with a little urban farming. We've had hops growing on property for about five years and haven't done anything with them. 
and now we're deciding to train them and, and form a hop yard here on site and utilize what we've got here. Rope now lines this stretch of Montana Avenue and soon those hops will climb, doing a couple of things for carters. I think it'll be aesthetically pleasing as well to be nice to look at. Polishing up Montana Avenue. But that is politized hops. But also taking those IPAs to the next level. We'll get the fruition of using the hops every year. Fresh hops could be ready in just a month. Urich even partnering with another brewery in town to showcase the harvest. Yeah, this year we're actually going to do a collaboration beer with Thirsty Street. Uh, we're going to do a fresh hop common beer and uh, utilize fresh hops this year. It's a sight we're not used to seeing in downtown Billings, but one that he says will spur some questions. Yeah, if you drive up to a brewery and they have a hop farm, kind of a, a small hop trellis growing, it's just nice to see that it, it kind of makes it full circle and it's a conversation piece. People will ask us, what are those? They're hops. We can educate people about it. And, and from a business standpoint, it all makes sense. I, I love IPA and so we're brewing a lot of it, but that's, that's pretty dominant right now. Um, consumer demand has made us make a lot of hoppy beer right now. Head on the MTN News at 5.30 here on Q2. The Golden Bats will head to Belfry for a reunion 70 years in the making. And a little later, we'll follow the path of Lewis and Clark as tonight's On the Trail heads to Pompey's Pillar.